Navigating life is not easy. From a young age, we learn how to read, write, and solve problems, but rarely do we get taught how to make big, life-changing decisions or how to commit to starting something new. For all the students watching this, how hard is it to decide on a college? You're only a teenager, you've never really been away from your family, and you haven't experienced much, if anything at all, about the real world, but whether you're ready or not, we're gonna need you to decide what you wanna do for the rest of your life and where you want to go to start that process. Feels like one of the hardest choices you'll ever have to make, because it is. For all the young professionals watching this, how hard is it to navigate that post-college transition? You have to decide where to go, how to pay the bills. It's time to start making some big boys and big girls decisions, but you're paralyzed at the starting line. Committing to a career is especially not easy. Navigating life isn't just hard for young adults either. All my seasoned professionals watching this, how hard would it be to quit your secure job and start your own business doing something you actually care about? What about committing to that new diet or exercise plan you keep meaning to go on? Why are we all paralyzed at the starting line? Has navigating life always been this difficult? For the same reason it's so hard for me to navigate writing this talk and commit to what to say to you today is the exact same reason it's so hard for anyone to confidently make decisions these days. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All of us are constantly consuming and comparing. Notification after notification, video after video, we're stuck scrolling Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, stressing about whatever CNN or Fox or Facebook has to say. In any remaining time left in the day, we binge Netflix or get stuck in the YouTube rabbit hole. We literally never stop consuming. And because of that, we're anxious, impatient, overwhelmed, and under pressure. All of us, especially young people. We're so distracted and so consumed that we value other people's thoughts and opinions far more than we value our own. So much so that we can't do anything without fearing failure or fearing being judged. With unrealistic definitions of success and unachievable standards of beauty constantly bombarding us by the supercomputers in our pockets, it's no coincidence that navigating life confidently is hard to do. When you're too busy focusing on the people around you, you stop focusing on your own journey and begin to lose your sense of self. You're either paralyzed by the pressure to succeed or you stuck living your life for the approval of others. I believe this is the reason our generation is feeling lost. Navigating life has always been hard and living in a digitally connected, connected society is only making it harder. By sharing my story with you, I wanna highlight the three key principles that will help you blaze your trail with clarity and confidence. My name is Dakota Blaze Raider, and I was born and raised in small town Nebraska where cows outnumber people 10 to one. If you've never been there, you're not really missing anything, and here's why. Where I grew up, we don't have much of, for anything of entertainment at all. There's no clubs, no professional sports, no big malls, no popular concert venues, no fun bars, and no extravagant restaurants. We had a movie theater, a bowling alley, and a county fair, so if that's your cup of tea for entertainment, Hall County, Nebraska might be the place for you. The reason I tell you that isn't, is to highlight the fact that as a community, we didn't really have much to entertain us, but more importantly, to distract us. Instead, we spent our free time with our family and our friends, having block parties and barbecues, making our own fun, connecting, being a community. We didn't spend much time, if any at all, in front of a screen. If it was the summer, we'd be fishing or swimming in the river. If it was fall, we'd be playing football at the park. And if it was winter, we'd be sledding behind four-wheelers in the snow. And if it was spring, we'd just be so stoked that the snow finally melted, we'd be out playing outside every second we could. I never thought I'd be the one to say this, but those were the days. The friendships, the memories, and the values made from those moments are priceless. There are a lot of things I miss about my childhood, but let me tell you about something that I do not miss. I got my first real job when I was 12 years old doing something called detasseling. I want you to picture a field of corn for a second. At the top of every corn stalk is this little like flowery thing sticking out and those little things are called tassels. In order for the corn to like pollinate, someone has to pull them out and yes, by hand. That task is called detasseling. In the Midwest, 
tens of thousands of 12 to 18 year old kids punch their time cards at 6 a.m. and spend eight hours a day walking up and down those rugged half mile long cornfields in the wet terrain detasseling corn plants all summer. Now I know that sounds miserable, which don't get me wrong, it absolutely was, but it's a really great way to instill a strong work ethic in a young person. Those experiences prove to me that X equals X. If I showed up, worked hard, and did my best, good things would happen, and they would continue to happen. This is principle number one. Wherever you're at in your journey, the only thing you can control is your attitude and your effort. When you find yourself distracted, anxious, unclear, remember this, control the controllables. Consciously shift your focus from the outside, from the people around you, to the inside. Give your maximum effort in every single moment. When you think you're giving all you got, I promise, there's another gear in there. Fast forward to the end of my high school days, and I was being asked those all too familiar questions. Where do you want to go to college? What do you want to major in? What do you want to do for the rest of your life? Being from a small town where everyone's stories are all so similar, I felt like I could see my entire life written on the wall in front of me. Those thoughts, those conversations, those questions, they scared me. I remember so vividly thinking to myself, what's on the other side of the coin? Like, is there even another side? Is there another option? Like, how do you get out, right? Like, I got this extreme feeling of curiosity and I couldn't shake it. I knew that there was so much more to the world than I had seen. I didn't have a passport. I'd never seen an ocean and I had never been west of Wyoming. How could I commit to a path that's already been paved when I knew there was an entire world out there waiting to be explored? I was completely naive to what life outside of rural, small town Nebraska looked like. I had never been introduced to different perspectives, different family structures, or even a worldview that was different than the one I was currently surrounded by. I had strong values, I was connected to my family and my friends, but at the very same time, I was naive to the rest of the world's cultural, political, and economic perspectives. That made me curious. I needed to know what else was out there. I had to see it for myself. So I chose to take the path that every good parent hopes their child takes. I didn't pick a major, and I did pick a college. <laughs> Without ever even visiting, I packed my 2007 Chevy Impala and drove west to California. Instead of going through a formalized four-year schooling process, I followed my curiosity and chose to chase the cultural and experiential education my soul had yearned for. When I got to California, I joined an incredible nonprofit and spent four years volunteering as a traveling educator. I taught students all around the world music, English, and life skills. I didn't listen to any lectures or regurgitate any lessons from a textbook. Instead, I worked with 150,000 students in seven countries and 38 American states. On that journey, we didn't stay in hotels. We stayed in the homes of generous families who gave us food to eat and a bed to sleep in. Those people were my professors. They opened my eyes to the different ways people think, live, and love. Whether it was a high rise in downtown Tokyo, a small village in the hills of Germany, or a cabin in the woods in Michigan, there was always something new to learn. And that is the second principle. Maintain curiosity and always be a student. Fall in love with asking questions and continuously seek out new ideas and perspective. This principle gives you growth and growth gives us purpose in life. Now the third principle is the hardest of them all. Believe in yourself. And don't be afraid to challenge the status quo. If you hesitate to take action based on the fear of what someone's gonna think, so be it. But let me give you an active example of what challenging the status quo looks like right now. The four years I spent traveling and teaching were far more than a volunteer work experience. It was a real world master's degree in problem solving, social and emotional intelligence, leadership and sociology. From teaching workshops to gyms full of kids that didn't speak the same language as me, to managing the travel and logistics in foreign, country, foreign countries I'd never dreamed of going, to later being responsible for recruiting and interviewing future members of that organization. I didn't just get taught things, I learned how to learn and the importance of learning. Knowledge doesn't just come in the form of a homework assignment, a textbook, or a research paper. Knowledge can be found in experiences. If you're gonna be a doctor, a lawyer, a CPA, or any other occupation that requires job-specific skills, college is your answer. But for others, participating in a formalized college system is not the only way to obtain a valuable education. 
in order to develop well-rounded people who are effective contributors to society, our focus must be multifaceted. Combining formal schooling with values-based education, a cultural education, social and emotional learning, and active workforce experience. Our goal needs to be to help people understand people. We need to create a system that values human skills over hard skills. We have to reprioritize skills like hard work, communication, body language, social awareness, respect, and how to put your phone away at the dinner table. If we don't, our generation and every generation after us will not be able to fully experience the most beautiful parts of life due to their inability to connect and create meaningful relationships. It's 2021 and we have infinite access to any and all information at the touch of a button. And with that comes unfathomable opportunities. Educational resources, courses, strategy, all of these things can be found for free if you seek to learn it. I took persuasive writing and the science of learning online from Harvard for free. Positive psychology and negotiation from Penn for free. And project management and financial markets from UCI for free. I could have paid $1,000 per course so I could get the verified certification of completion, but that's not what it's about. Instead, I accessed the same materials, was taught by the same professors in the same remote fashion, and equipped myself with the same knowledge and skills. The only thing it cost me was a little time, self-accountability, and hard work. A few of those things that walking up and down cornfields back in Nebraska taught me. The good news is every single one of you has the opportunity to go out there and blaze your trail. Your journeys may be very similar and they may be very different. If you decide that packing up your car and moving across the country to California and volunteering for a nonprofit is right for you, go for it. Just make sure you're learning and growing along the way. If you decide that moving into a dorm and getting a college education is right for you, go for it. Just make sure you're learning and growing along the way. The amount of success you obtain in life is not determined by the path you take, but by the amount of effort that you give the questions you ask, and the knowledge you learn while going through the process. Not everyone in life is going to agree with and support everything you do, and that's perfectly okay. What isn't okay is remaining frozen at the starting line, paralyzed by the fear of failure or the fear of rejection. If you work hard, stay curious, and believe in yourself, you will blaze your trail. Thank you, guys.